By the government's own 2009 estimates, Charleston was right at 3,000 residents, but the 2010 census only counted 2,500. Laura had taken shelter here in the storm cellar when the high winds hit. She could hear everything happening outside. We've been told there's a very large global interest in this auction. Not only will people be coming from overseas to bid here on site, this suspension bridge over Lee Creek behind me was completely demolished in 2004. The superintendent says the strange thing is the roadways have been passable almost all along. In fact, today they're dry. Last night uh, they had a massive tornado that blew through this morning. You're hearing the birds and it's quite peaceful. A miraculous story from Van Buren. A truck driver is lucky to be alive after barely escaping an explosive fire with his life. Scorched earth is the only sign left behind. This was the scene around 530 tonight on Fayetteville Road. Police say the driver thought he had a mechanical problem and exited off Interstate 40. He found nothing and was proceeding to get back on the interstate. That's when officers say his clutch went out and smoke suddenly began to billow. The driver stopped and as he was getting out, the semi's cab was engulfed in flames. He managed to escape without injury. The idea to write a children's book came as she read her own daughter a bedtime story. But the inspiration as she put pen to page came from her late father. John, what did we see the stock market do when Walmart made this announcement? The market liked it. It was up almost a dollar a share. What are we going to see? What difference is this going to make for Walmart? Clearly, they sold it because it wasn't performing as well as they yeah. had hoped over yeah. 10 years. Yeah. What could it do for the company? Brad, when it's hot enough to melt jello, it is too <laughs> hot. You know, Jared, and it, that should be the measurement, I think. You know, you need that nice room temperature. That's that's what I want to feel outside. It's pretty hot. I know it is. All right. Thanks, Brad. Well, hopefully we actually see something because tonight on my way back to work, there was a little bit, but it was kind of one of those deals where you're like, is it raining or is a bird flying overhead? Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, pretty devastating for the for the work that we've done around here. Lane and Laura Williams have run this ranch for 15 years and just made their final payment on the property less than a week ago. Now all of their hard work that's been lost will require more to get it back to the impressive place it was before the storm. It's loud, loud, loud. It, um, I heard hail, I heard stuff blowing around, things hitting. Laura had taken shelter here in the storm cellar when the high winds hit. She could hear everything happening outside. Her husband, Lane, works for the railroad, and he was on a train at the time. As soon as he got the call, he came home to check on his wife and see the damage that had been done. A significant section of the roof of their home had been ripped away, and rain had damaged the sheetrock walls. Floors were flooded inside. Outdoors, nearly none of their perfectly trimmed trees went untouched. Across the road, it was a similar scene. They said the noise was just indescribable and you could just, it was like the whole world was coming to an end. Randy Selno's friends, Dennis and Beverly Orr, braved the storm inside this mobile home with their grandkids. Seeing the scene in the daytime, it seems almost miraculous that they survived. There's a massive tree, I wouldn't even know how big around, it's so dark, that's completely uprooted and it's taking the power lines down and there's a couple of uh, pieces of the siding that are ripped wide open. In the end, the Orr family was fortunate to escape alive. Near Howe in LaFleur County, Jared Broyles, 5 News. Some people prefer to drive a Mustang, but my friend Ross Devers would rather ride a Belgian. His mother-daughter team of horses named Molly and Megan may not be the fastest rides around, but they're definitely dependable. And let's face it, they don't take gas, but they do make it. Horses have almost always played a part in Ross Devers' life. Since I rode a horse to school, I was in the eighth grade. Years later, he has several on this piece of property in Dyer, including mother-daughter duo Molly and Megan Lynn. Well, this has just been uh, a great time for me in, in my retirement years, and I've been uh, training uh, and breaking horses to work. Ross decides that Molly will be the one to pull the buggy into town. But before we head out, there's at least one dirty deed that has to be done. And Ross seems to think I'm the man for the job. Here. Where you want me to take it to? You got that pile right over there. All right. Get a picture of that. Okay. Wait a minute. Why does everyone seem to think that I'm afraid to get my hands dirty and scoop poop? I grew up in the country for crying out loud. Anyway, a few belts and buckles later, we're on our way. Ross says he enjoys taking his time, and on top of that, he saves gas by not driving his Dodge Extended Cab pickup. Somebody asked me what kind of gas mileage I was getting, and I told him I was getting about three whiffs to the mile. Uh-huh. Well, let me just say that if you didn't get it, 
I'm not explaining it. Now, I know the rules of the road for cars, but when it comes to other modes of transportation, I'm not so sure. So I guess we don't heed the stop sign. Ah, uh, it's not this speed. <laughs> it's a Cal <laughs> California stop. Ross takes his green ride to town about once a week. The first stop today is the feed store for fuel. And trust me when I say that getting grain causes a lot less pain than the almost $4 you're paying at the pump. Once we arrive, he picks up his supplies and gets his grain. 20 minutes later, he's ready to ride the road again, this time working their way to Walmart. But like me, you might be wondering, exactly where would you park a horse and buggy? At Walmart, they, here locally, we don't have any hitching posts there, so I usually have to get a handicapped parking place, and uh, they haven't said anything about it yet, so. You know how the things you say usually come back to you? Well, when we left Ross's barn, I actually ran the very same stop sign in the 5 News SUV. Don't tell the Crawford County deputies, though, although I guess I'm actually confessing on live TV. Darren? 